I was downwind. I had a tailwind. Oh my god, I got... How much wind can a helicopter fly in? It's like autopilot, dude. How do you fly a helicopter? Well, I'm gonna show you. This is going to be a fun video. There are tons of variables when it comes to answering this question. It's like literally so many. So we'll go through all of them. I'm really curious to know what all of you pilots out there think. So let me know down in the comments below and let's get into it. When you're answering this question, how much wind can a helicopter fly? The first variable we have to talk about is actually the helicopter, what the manufacturer and the operating handbook says. So we'll go through a couple different helicopters and go through their pilot's operating handbook and see what that says and we'll comment on that. Okay, so this first one is coming from the Robinson R22. This is in section two, page 215 of the Robinson R22. This is like the most popular training helicopter. Lots of people have flown this, so lots of people are gonna know this regulation. One, flight when surface winds exceed 25 knots, including gusts, is prohibited. Two, flight when surface wind gust spread exceeds 15 knots is prohibited. Three, continued flight in moderate, severe, or extreme turbulence is prohibited. Now, this is not specifically for the aircraft. This is a pilot limitation that the FAA has mandated that people that are flying the R-22 follow. But that doesn't necessarily limit how much wind the helicopter can fly in. Now I have to say, as, as we're going through this, the absolute worst wind I have ever been in was I was flying in wind that, I think it was like gusting like 30 or 35, which is like pretty strong. I was, I was definitely at like five, f more than 500 hours at that point. I was in a Robinson R44 and it, here's like a mountain and the wind was coming this way. So we were like in the headwind and we circled the mountain and it was all fine as we were going into the wind and then we circled around the backside and when I was on this side, so I had a down, I was downwind, I had a tailwind. Oh my God, I got, I got absolutely destroyed. Like we got picked up, we got dropped. Um, my rotor RPM fluctuated quite a bit. Uh, it was not a good situation. So like they say, be careful. Mountain flying and strong winds and turbulence is super dangerous. I learned a lot, be careful. Okay, moving on to uh, the helicopter that I fly most commonly now is the Cabri G2. This is section four of the POH. Um, so, this is really important. Read this warning section. Um, the blades can be very dangerous, particularly at low speeds with gusts or wind. They are very heavy and flexible. So what they're saying, and this is a Robinson R44 here, is as your RPMs are low, your blades sag or they droop. They droop down, so they are literally down lower closer to the ground so if you're having someone walk in if there's a wind gust those blades can especially in like a robinson r22 or an r just a robinson helicopter those blades can teeter quite a bit and if you've got like someone walking uh they could get hit by that or at low rpms those blades can actually go and even hit the tail boom and chop the tail boom off. Now, this is less likely in the Cabri G2, but for any helicopter you're in, it's really important to keep your RPMs high in a higher region. But once again, we still have not answered the question, how much wind can helicopters fly in? This gets kind of interesting. In section five of the Cabri G2, they say the maximum demonstrated wind for rotor startup or shutdown is 40 knots in including gusts. This is definitely getting closer to my personal minimums or my personal limits actually. But if they say you can start up or shut down, that's kind of like the limit where they're saying beyond this, like it has not been demonstrated. We can't say that the helicopter can handle it. And I would say like 40 knots is if you're flying in 40 knots, like it's, it's probably doable, but anything more. And you're really like, even for like super good helicopter pilots, you're kind of getting onto the bounds of weird stuff. So this is 40 knots for the Cabri G2, a piston helicopter. If you go look at a Bell 407, this is um, a Bell 407 POH, page uh, one five down here. Maximum allowable airspeed for sideward and rearward flight or crosswind hover is 35 knots. So they limit you hard right there in a Bell 407, big turbine helicopter, four bladed helicopter to 35 knots. 35 knots in a hover, like sustained 35 knots is not terrible. But I, I mean, if you're hovering with a 35 knot 
crosswind, you're holding, like if the wind is coming from your left, you're canted pretty hard into that wind and you have quite a bit of cyclic deflection. I think they might even mention it, but I mean, you're probably over one or two, two and a half inches laterally in cyclic positioning. Like you're pretty much getting to the limit of what the helicopter can hold into. So the Bell 407 is clearly putting a wind limit at 35 knots. Um, the Cabri G2 is pretty much putting their limit at 40 knots. Uh, the Robinson R22 probably a little bit less than that. But so we're saying anything under 40 is pretty much the wind limit, but it's not really, it's a little bit more complex than that. But here's where it gets different. It gets different at altitude. At altitude, so let's say you're like just flying on a cross country somewhere. Maybe the winds are 20 knots on the field, totally fine, totally doable. But up at altitude, if there are 30, 40, 50, 60 knots, that's not necessarily a problem if you're moving with them at altitude streamlined into the wind. I wouldn't even blink twice about it. Like I'd be impressed at my ground speed. I really wouldn't be concerned if I had a 50 knot tailwind. If I even had a 60 knot tailwind or a 70 knot tailwind, I'm really not concerned. Like it's not a problem. I mean, if it's turbulent, that's one thing. Like if you're getting bumped and it's not comfortable, yeah, then I'm concerned about structural damage or in a Robinson low G mass bumping. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about those factors, but like 70 knots, uh, steady at altitude is not a problem. So we're still not done answering the question of like, where's the wind limit? So like surface winds, probably 40 knots for most helicopters, maybe up to 50 or 60, but anything beyond that, like it's, it's, it's done. At altitude, probably like 80, 90, 100 if it's smooth wind. So there are a couple different variables there, but then you also have to think about the type of wind. So if you're at the surface at the airport and it's really windy, really gusty, then those come down. So if it's like 15 gusting 35, those are big gusts. Like those are coming in and those are slapping you around. And that's really difficult. If you're at altitude and it's like 40 knots, but it's super bumpy, that's really a problem. So if it's like smooth and consistent, you can accept more than really gusty and bumpy. Another variable you have to consider is the mission and the pilot flying. So if I am an instructor bringing a student out and they've got not too many hours, anything more than 10 or 15 knots is really not beneficial for the student. They are going to be struggling so much and the student is the instructor is going to be on the controls so much helping the student handle the wind that they're really not getting that much out of it. And if it's like a, a flight school where the student is paying for those hours as the instructor, I'm not going to take them out in it because it's not going to be that beneficial. But then if you're like a commercial operator and you're in a aircraft that is capable and you feel comfortable in those strong winds, you can bring up your minimums. You can bring up your tolerances. You can fly in 30, 35, 40 knot winds. Now the company might put limitations on what you can fly in and the operational risk that that's gonna bring, but you can accept that once you have hundreds or thousands of hours. And the final point is we've kind of already mentioned it, but if it, it really does depend on the wind type. If it is smooth, steady wind, you can accept it higher, but th something you have to consider is wind shear. You know, wind shear is, let's say the winds are 20 knots at the field, they're pretty consistent, but at 2,000 feet, they jump up to 40 knots. Well, if they're 20 moving in this direction here, and then they're 40 here, at some point, there's a boundary layer. That boundary layer is where wind shear could happen, and passing through that, that wind shear boundary, that's really dangerous, and it can get really uncontrolled. So to answer the question of how much wind helicopters can fly in, there really is a range, and it kind of does matter, but to say, to put a final number on it, I would say in general, helicopters can fly in winds of less than 45 knots on the surface. No, I'm not saying do that. And I'm not saying that everyone can handle that and all helicopters can handle that or that it's safe. But I'd say in general, less than 45 knots on the surface. At altitude, I think if it's smooth and comfortable and it, it's a decent ride, I think you can double that number. I think helicopters can handle winds 
of 90 miles per hour at altitude. Now, I, th- that really is insane, but the reason I'm able to justify that is from my personal experience, and I, I don't have a ton of time, I'm just under 1,500 hours now. I've had he- headwinds and tailwinds of 50 and 60 miles per hour. Like a 60 knot tailwind is a lot, but it's really not that crazy. And I'll, I'm still a relatively young pilot. So saying 70 or 80 or 90 even is really it's a lot and it sounds kind of crazy if you haven't done it but a 90 knot tailwind at altitude is not that unmanageable do you agree with what i had to say um i'm kind of just babbling i think these are like I said, this is not advice. I'm not telling you to do this. I just believe that these are kind of the limits that helicopters can fly in. Do you agree with me? Let me know your reasons why you do or you do not. Go ham. Leave a little wind emoji in the comments below. If you like this video, subscribe for more and smash that like button and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.